The periodic table, as we know it today, was first developed by Dmitri Mendeleev. There were not as many elements known at that time, but the basic structure was the same. There were even a few gaps in that early periodic table that were used to predict and help discover new elements. Mendeleev organized the periodic table into rows that were called periods and columns that were called groups or families. These groups have similar characteristics because they have the same number of valence electrons. These are the electrons that are on the outer edge of an atom and are very important in identifying the chemical properties of an element. This leads us to the important idea of periodic trends or patterns in the characteristics of elements found on the periodic table based on their location. First is the atomic radius or the size of an atom. Atomic radius increases as we move down the periodic table because we are adding extra shells of electrons and decreases as we move to the right on the periodic table. This is caused because these elements have more protons in their nucleus, which makes the electrons in that element feel a greater attraction towards the nucleus and decreases their atomic radius. So overall, atomic radius decreases as we move down and to the left on the periodic table. Ionization energy is another periodic trend, and this is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from an atom. When we're talking about electrons in this way, we're talking about valence electrons. And the further away these valence electrons are from the nucleus, the easier it is to remove them. The ionization energy trend is opposite of the atomic radius trend. Ionization energy increases as we move up and to the right on the periodic table. Let's take francium for example. It is very easy to remove an electron from francium because it has a single valence electron and it is far away from the nucleus. Helium is a good counterexample to francium because it's very difficult to remove an electron from helium. This is because the electrons in helium are close to the nucleus and it is a full electron shell. There are a few variations from this trend of ionization energy on the periodic table, but the pattern generally holds true. Electron affinity is another important periodic trend, and it can be thought of as the opposite of ionization energy. This is because electron affinity is how much an atom wants to gain an electron. Electron affinity increases as we move up and to the right on the periodic table. We can disregard noble gases when discussing this periodic trend because their valence electron shells are full. Fluorine is an example of electron affinity because it wants to gain one additional electron so that its outer shell can be full, just like a noble gas. Elements on the opposite side of the periodic table have a low electron affinity because they don't want to gain any new electrons. They would rather lose them. Again, there are some small variations to this trend of electron affinity as there were with ionization energy, but the trend does generally hold true. The variations in the trends for electron affinity and ionization energy happen for the same reason in atoms. Finally, electronegativity is the ability of an atom to hold onto electrons in a chemical bond. This is both ionic and covalent bonds. Electronegativity increases as we move up and to the right on the periodic table. In a chemical bond, electrons can be shared evenly, unevenly, or entirely taken by an element in that bond. These differences are caused by electronegativity or by the polling strength of the atoms involved in those bonds. The electrons in a bond will be pulled closer to the atom with the greater electronegativity.